OK, the sentence here, four words long, seems fairly simple. However, when you take a look at it and start to throw your analytical skills down there, you might understand that um, it doesn't seem to fit with what we've discussed over the last two days. So let's see how that works. Madison, give me a noun verb pair. Uh, okay. she made. Very good. So noun verb, she made. Now, what about us and, ha or no, I'm sorry, hold off on that question. Madison, what kind of verb is made, linking or action? Uh, Don't look at the stuff over here. Just look at the verb. Action. Correct. It is an action verb, which Madison means that it should lead to what kind of predicate structures? Um, Come on, it should be in your notes. Link, uh, linking verbs lead to these two. Action verbs lead to these two. Emily? direct and indirect objects. So according to the teaching you've had over the last couple days, this should lead to either a direct or and or an indirect object. Okay? Do you have anything in that sentence that looks like it might be a direct or an indirect object? Mitch? Uh, seems that way. However, happy doesn't fit because all indirect all direct and indirect objects are objects and all objects are what part of speech? Nouns. What part of speech is happy? Somebody help Mitch. It's an adjective. Mitch, if you're unsure, try to attach it to a noun. The happy monkey. See, he's happy. <laughs> so um, happy must be an adjective because it can attach to a noun, like monkey. Uh, what's, do you know what the noun form of happy is? Yeah. Correct. And then happily would be the adverb form. There is no happify, although that would be an awesome verb. Um, so we should continue to use it until it becomes a verb. You'll use it every day, at least three times. Uh, <laughs> English happified me today. All right. Um, so, excellent. Mitch says happy looks like it might be the thing being made. However, it's not a noun. Therefore, it can't be a direct or an indirect object. So. Let's try again. Is there anything in there that looks like an indirect or direct object? Because it's a pronoun, right? Which satisfies. It's, it works as a noun. In grammar, that's technically considered a direct object. It is the thing being made. What's being made? Us. Now, that might look a little bit weird because you say, no, we're not. she's not actually making us. Yeah, but she's making some part of us. What part of us is she making? The happy part of us. Mm -hmm. Try to step back and understand this philosophically for a moment. We are composed of many different emotions, behavioral traits, so on and so forth. There's a certain behavioral, uh, there's a certain emotion, emotional characteristic right now that we have that she has made. So she has made part of us. She has made the happy part of us. But happy is still an adjective. So this is actually looking like a predicate adjective. So we have a mix, a little bit of both. We have predicate adjective and direct object. Kind of crazy. But English is crazy, so we can deal with it. Uh, control G, please, Mosa. Thank you. <coughs> and then if you are paying attention to the page that Emily alerted you to, page 31, you should see how this is actually pretty easy to diagram. Um, let me just do it for you quickly. Actually, you know what? Let me see one of you do it. Page 31 should be pretty easy, right? I've even given you a nice baseline. Come on, Emily, it was your question. If you feel like bringing the Warners up, feel free. But show us what's going on with this. Correct. Correct. Vertical line indicates the direct object. That is correct. 
us is the direct object. Diagonal line indicates the presence of a predicate adjective or predicate nominative. Correct, Emily. Thank you very much. That's it. Happy wouldn't have like a line down here. No, because happy doesn't modify us. Happy is actually linking to the verb. It's part of what's being made. Oh. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. I thought it would describe us, so I got really confused it, where it was on the line. It does. Um, it does kind of describe us, but what's happening is it's, it's a product of the verb. Okay. It's what's being produced by the verb, so it's got to be one of these predicate adjective or nominative ideas. Okay. So it's thrown right there. Okay. Yeah, of course. Um, and thank you for the question, Emily, because that's sort of a kind of adv advanced concept. You will see examples of the objective complement diagrammed not in video form before now, but um, just diagrammed as an example demonstration on that diagrammer website. So if you're unsure about it and you want to see another example, refer to page 31 in the Warners or refer to those resources on that website.